What's up, everybody, and welcome to a summer school edition of the Falcons Final Whistle Podcast. I'm Scott Bayer, alongside my partner in crime, Tori McElhaney. How's it going? It's good. How's your summer? You know? It's nice that we're keeping in touch. <laughs> this is the first time that we've seen each other uh-huh. in a solid 10 days. Which may be a record that since it probably we is. joined forces last camp. Um, but yeah, and this is like our 35th. 4,000th podcast. Oh. At, at is this it 34,000? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's Congratulations, science. everyone. If you've been listening, <laughs> congrats on 34,000. To all of those. And uh, as we're kind of moving through the summer, heading towards training camp, we learned a lot over the course of the off-season program and the and the mandatory mini camp. We know because Tori McElhaney wrote 2,500 or so words <laughs> about it at my request. <laughs> here's, the and, thing. here's the thing. If anyone read the... So Scott and I like switched up and did like five uh like storylines observations from camp and i wrote in that i was like i don't think scott wrote or read the other 2500 words that i've already previously written on this and then scott texted me was like um just so we're clear uh we're desperate for stories we're desperate for stories right now (laughs) and uh we're just trying to make it through the summer and uh everything's fine and yeah. Like, yeah everything's fine we're yeah. good uh, and so after what is now probably more like four thousand words probably. between your mini camp notebooks and our top five ota observations yes um it's time to move forward because wow. we've taken a look at all those notes and we've decided that there are some lingering questions beyond all those words that we've written mm-hmm. down on atlantafalcons.com. And there are some lingering questions because there's a lot of things we that just can't be accomplished with the practice rules of minicamp, and there's a lot of um, roster movement that may happen between now and training camp. So as everyone across the Atlanta Falcons fan base is wondering, what are they going to do with this? And they submit mailbag questions, and I'm sure you get questions on social media. What about this? What's going to happen here? Well, let's go through four or five of them, shall we? Mm -hmm. Uh, And of course, we're going to talk about quarterbacks because that's what we do around here when you have an uncertain quarterback situation. There's going to be some roster movement Mm -hmm. as we head into training camp. There's some questions about inside linebacker Deion Jones. We're going to address all that. We're going to talk about rookies that may make an, an instant impact. And also, nobody's worn pads yet. Nobody's more excited about wearing pads than Tyler Algier, by the way. Hey-o. Every time he has a press conference, he says how geeked he is to hit someone. Um, Does he use that, geeked? Uh, probably. I, I wish That sounds would. like a Scott term. That's definitely a Scott term. Yeah. Um, but I love it nonetheless. Thank you about Tyler saying geeked. Yeah, I feel like that would be good for him. Um, you would be like my brother. I know. He's always so like relaxed and calm, but yeah. clearly ready to hit someone. What did you call him, a bowling home? ball with spikes? A uh, bowling ball covered in butcher knives. That's yeah. it. Um, anyway, so we're going to talk about all that. And there's a couple of position groups that haven't been able to do what they really do well. And that's the linemen mm-hmm. because you can't put pads on and you yeah. really can't have that full physical contact. So we can identify what we saw in seven on sevens and then talk about when they start playing rough and tumble football. So we're going to get to all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, let's go back to a story, Tori. Hey. <laughs> I can't believe I've never done that before. Uh, Surely story. it'll be a segment on something that we write I at mean, some point. We got to get Tori's it sponsored stories. now. I mean. Uh, Tori's stories, Tori's takeaways, Tori's notebook. It's all. It's all right there for the taking. <laughs> um, you wrote an interesting story that was well received. Thank you, everyone, for reading it about the Falcons roster. Ah, yes. Um, how it's How it's disproportioned. Yes. Right? There's. Yeah. I think now there's 12 wide receivers, Mm -hmm. seven tight ends. That's a lot, even on a 90-man roster. And Arthur Smith, and you talked about, A, why do that now, and then transition to make things more evened out. Mm -hmm. I I guess give us kind of an an, an explanation of that, and would you expect to see more more, uh, big boys join the team? Yes and yes. Um, So essentially, this was something that Arthur Smith talked about within one of the very first like open OTAs that we had, he made the comment. He was like, you see a lot of receivers. You see that we've signed a lot of receivers, but just know that that's going to change. This roster is going to turn over. We're going to add more to the line 
both offensively and defensively as you get closer to training camp because it goes back to what you're talking about. They get to put the pads on. They actually get to hit each other. There's actual preseason games in which they're going against competition. Right now, or I guess the last month or so, you haven't been able to do that. So it's been a lot of seven on seven. A lot of seven on sevens. A lot of kind of just walkthroughs. Um, and and when you do that, it's more of an opportunity to see your skill guys. And that was kind of what Arthur Smith was saying: is that this is a chance for us to really get in the work with your receivers, your tight ends, quote unquote running backs. Even though even running backs, you don't get to see all that much at this point in time in the off season. In the connection that they have with Desmond Ritter and Marcus Mariota. And so now what you're, I think we're going to see over the next six weeks is we're going to see those wide receiver and tight end numbers dwindling down. While they're dwindling down, I imagine that the offensive and defensive lines are going to start trending upwards. You're going to get more linemen in here for training camp, specifically in the preseason. So to answer your question, that's kind of the – overall gist of what they're doing in terms of the idea of roster construction and also yes there will be more more linemen come the end of july on this roster so for everybody who's freaking out about it don't it's fine <laughs> yeah it, we already um started to see that happen that they signed a, a veteran center jonathan harrison and uh and a defensive lineman from the saints and, and bears what a shock. Um, wow, look at that. As well, <laughs> yeah. in exchange for a wide receiver and a running back. Mm -hmm. So we, we're starting to see that flip. One player that there are question marks surrounding is Deion Jones. Yes. If you go back to Terry Fontenot's combine press conference, I believe. Where Gosh, he, they all kind of run together. They in my really head. do. I have uh, no idea when anyone I mean, I was going to say pre-draft. At some point during this long, off eventful offseason, yeah. Terry was talking about – the big contracts, right? Yes. Matt Ryan's contract has been moved. Mm -hmm. That's going to help them salary cap wise in a major way mm -hmm. next year. They have $62 million in dead money right now. <laughs> um, so they, they dealt with that contract. Grady Jarrett and Jake Matthews, they dealt with those contracts. Mm -hmm. um, Calvin Ridley obviously is um, unavailable mm -hmm. all season. So that contract is kind of, let's put that off to the side, yeah. right? The other one, is Deion Jones, mm -hmm. right? That one hasn't been touched yet. So there are a lot of questions about, are they going to move him? My mailbag is full of these questions. Yeah. Are they going to move him? What are they going to do with Deion Jones going into it? He makes a ton of money. He has a cap hit over 20 million. There isn't a ton of savings, but now that we're after June 1st, you get the designation where you split that cap hit in half, mm -hmm. right? So there is an opportunity to save some cash. There's also an opportunity to gain even more cap space next year. Mm -hmm. um, as we know, Arthur Smith said that he missed the off-season program, the on-field portions of the off-season program mm -hmm. uh, while recovering from a procedure, yes. I think was the term that he used. So he's not healthy. You can't trade a guy who's not healthy. Mm -hmm. But as you evaluate... How do you evaluate the prospect of moving Dion or not moving Dion? You know, kind of pros and cons list this thing for us. Yeah, goodness, I could write a whole story about it, which I'm sure I will at mm -hmm. some point this offseason. I think when I look at it, it's – you kind of go both ways. You can look at it in terms of the money, in terms of the cap, in terms of the dead money, all of those things. You can look at it as a financial business decision and then also look at it as to what you need on the field. My question in this is how much do you need – What's how do you weigh how much you need Dion on the field versus how much you need that relief and or opportunity that moving him provides in 2023? Right. Those are what I weigh when I'm looking at this, I guess, scenario. And, and when I think about – where the inside linebacker room is right now. Good. Yeah, that's it, a good point. I I don't know if I can weigh that they have to have Dion out there. And I know that's crazy to say because Dion Jones has been such an integral part of this defense since he's been here. But I do think, you know, there can come a time where that's not necessarily like one person isn't is no longer I don't want to say needed. But I just see that you do have Rashawn Evans. You do have Michael Walker that I think those two specifically, and then you go out and get Troy Anderson and mm -hmm. you, you sign some free agents and, and all those kind of things. 
but those two specifically, I feel like can do what needs to be done to get you through 2022. And if Dion's not healthy, fully healthy, and, and I know that also plays into, okay, what does a trade market look like for him? Th- these are all like moving pieces. Right. But I do think like the main, the main things that I weigh is financial business de- decision versus how much do you really need him physically on this defense? Right. And that's a crazy thing to say because he is uh, a modern NFL linebacker right. with elite talent. Mm-hmm. And we've seen that for with him representing th- this franchise. You go back to 2020, his stat line was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, you're right. It's about weighing all these pros and cons and the fact that draft capital for a team that is building, uh, trying to build a young foundation, even if it's, on a day three pick yeah that's a kind of a big deal Mm -hmm. maybe you could go out i mean you saw what they were able to do on day three yeah that's what i was gonna say is like even if it is a day three pick you look at the guys that they were able to get i think that someone like tyler algier is an important day three pick 100 and that he's actually going to be a an important part of this running back rotation i'm not saying that he's going to go out and be starter day one that's not at all what i'm saying but what i am saying is i think that they saw this guy slide to that third day and they really valued that pick because you have to bring someone in who is going to be able to help cordero lighten the load of what cordero patterson does for the offense in the backfield mainly Cordero Patterson does a lot of other things for this offense but let's just talk about that you Mm -hmm. know and I think when you're thinking about Deion Jones and it's like how much do you value that day three value pick and what that pick could potentially be later on I mean you even think about I don't know Grady Jarrett was a fifth round pick fifth round pick he was a day three pick I mean even going back to um Foye Oluokun, mm-hmm. who is now with the the Jags, he was a third day pick. Yeah, Russ Gage was a day three pick. Yes, there's a lot of there's good a lot of good players pl- from that. Exactly, and so I know there's a lot of not good players probably that have come from that. But don't you want to roll the dice? Right, exactly. And if you get draft capital and you want to bring in guys into your system that you want to mold and you really believe in, Ade Ogundeji a guy who is probably going to be a starter at outside linebacker this year in his second year. Fifth round pick. Fifth round pick. Yeah. These are all guys that at this point in time in this organization are going to make an impact. How much do we weigh that in terms of how much you value Deion Jones and his future within the organization? Right. And those are all difficult questions that Terry Fonno and the front office have to evaluate. And we do not. And we do not. We, we can just, just get to talk about it. And that is... a there's a lot less pressure right i would say um (laughs) but nonetheless i i I do think that there's going to be some pre uh training camp movement Mm -hmm. Deion jones is obviously one that everybody is keeping an eye on if he's still on the team Mm -hmm. you just have a really 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 good linebacker on your team either that's not the world's worst thing Mm -hmm. either so they've got options i think that's a good place for terry fontenot to operate from um especially when you look at the depth at linebacker there's a lot Mm -hmm. of different ways that you can move pieces around to try to be as competitive as possible again while setting up your cap situation in the best possible way which would be to touch all those contracts make them a little bit more palatable or ship them um as we move through it right you you mentioned tyler algier Mm -hmm. right as a guy who could come in and make that quote unquote instant impact mm. that fans desperately want mm-hmm. and coaches want to say, hey, <laughs> let's Pump chill. Right. Yeah. So obviously, Kyle Pitts had a massive one. Richie Grant was on a different um, track, mm-hmm. a different development plan. Jay- uh, Jalen Mayfield was forced into one. Yeah. So ultimately, you, you look at this rookie class, and w- the state of the Falcons roster suggests that some of these higher picks are going to play a lot Mm -hmm. that not everybody will have the luxury of coming along slowly. Mm -hmm. I would put Drake London in that class almost as much as anybody. I would put Arnold Ebik Haiti in that Mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. I think he could play a lot right away. And sometimes it's unfair. Here's a guy who spent six months in a job interview and the previous four months in a football season. And now he's going to, he's going pro and then you'd be like, okay, just, just play three downs. 
you're the 38th pick, but yeah. play three downs. Yeah. Or you're the 182nd pick, play all three downs. Mm -hmm. That's a tough expectation. Puts a lot of pressure on these guys. And I think Arthur Smith does a good job of alleviating that pressure. That's important to him. Mm -hmm. And I think that it should be important to put these guys in the best position to succeed at the track where they can do it. Because how many times, and I'll get off my soapbox here, how many times do we see young players in bad situations or young players who buckle under the pressure of trying to be a franchise savior in week one? Mm -hmm. You don't want that. But you have to look at this draft class and wonder – who could be the guys? And we're going to find out during training camp. This is lingering questions. This, this is not bold predictions time. Right. But you look at this draft class and you think, okay, there could be quite a few guys here who yeah. are going to play lots of snaps. Yeah, and I think we almost knew that when we were going into the draft. I think I remember saying, maybe on this podcast, but saying this group, whoever it is that they bring in, has an opportunity to do something that a lot of rookie classes across the league won't be able to do simply because of how many needs the Falcons had on the roster. I mean, I know we don't want to say like, oh, drafting for need, et cetera, et cetera. I think you're that always drafting for you're need. always drafting for need. <laughs> that's a that's a secret um, secret sauce is that you're always drafting for need, mm -hmm. um, whether it's this year, next year, the year after that, and so with that considering that i think this rookie class has an opportunity to make their rookie year what they want it to be i think that they are going i think every single one of them is going to have an opportunity to play some type of role on this 53 man roster and when we get to that cut down I think that even i even think about like the two georgia guys justin Schaefer and john fitzpatrick I'm just going to bring them up yeah I know that they're – I don't foresee them – they're not going to come out and be day one starters. Absolutely not. But they're going to push the guys who are. And I think that is just as important when Arthur Smith talks about competition, 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 bringing in guys who can push guys and play a different type of role. I think those two specifically, Justin Schaefer can push Jalen Mayfield at that interior guard position. I think John Fitzpatrick provides a different type of – tied in he's not Kyle Pitts he's never going to be Kyle Pitts but he but could be Lee Smith he could be Lee Smith exactly and that's why I think we have to think about this overall scope of these rookies and how many opportunities that they have at their disposal you could see guys be you talk about Drake London Arnold Abiquetti Troy Anderson Tyler Algier and then we not even getting into Desmond Ritter yet I mean these guys have the opportunity to play starting roles and heavy rotational roles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And we're kind of getting towards the end of this podcast. So I was going to dive into a lot of the position battles coming up. Mm -hmm. We've got all summer to do that. So let's just get yes. right to the quarterbacks here and wrap it on that note mm -hmm. because we, and we're going to talk about quarterbacks every time every, too. Yeah. But nonetheless, this is another one of those things that I go back to the mailbag is kind of like a pulse of where the fan base is. And I get so much of that. Scott, you keep saying it's Marcus Mariota. He's going to start. He's leader yeah. in the clubhouse. He's the clear number one at, at, at this point. I think that they want me to say something else. They want you to say it's Desmond Ritter. Or this is going to be a showdown yeah. in a flowery branch. I'm not ready to say that <laughs> now that we get our, <laughs> our horrible. Our movie trailer voice going. Uh, yeah. But nonetheless, I, I think that they want some big showdown. Yeah. Maybe it, that will develop over the course right. of the preseason. Maybe Desmond Ritter will generate some buzz and some enthusiasm with a preseason performance or two. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, I still think it's Marcus Mariota early, and I don't think that's bad for Desmond Ritter no, either. No, I don't think that's bad for him. No, I mean, I think the reason why you bring Marcus Mariota in here is to be to have this other chance at starting. Arthur Smith wouldn't have brought in just anyone off the street. He wanted Marcus Mariota because of the history that they have, because of the chance that they have to kind of resurrect his career. So in saying all of that, I think it's really good to have Marcus Mariota in here for, you know, two years, mm -hmm. maybe more, maybe less. We don't know. To, because I don't think if Desmond Ritter was the number eight pick, I think this is a completely different conversation. 100%. He was not. He was the 74th overall pick. That changes, I think, the vision that you have 
for someone at that position. So I think this is all good. I think they work really well together in that quarterback room. I think they're learning alongside each other. I think they're going to push each other. I I don't mind that that it's going to be I don't I don't mind that it's not going to be Desmond or it is going to be Marcus I mean I think this is okay yes. overall you don't have Matt Ryan anymore like I know you're looking for a franchise quarterback but I just don't know at this point in time you don't have a Matt Ryan on the roster Matt Ryan was drafted third right third right Desmond was drafted 74th 74. and I think there's some confusion because Desmond was the second quarterback yes. taken that maybe that that he's giving some some kind of falsely elevated status. But right. nonetheless, I think we need to go into it with this lingering, with the understanding that we're not going to know who the long-term solution is at, at quarterback nope. in camp nope. or in week one nope, or heading into the 2023 draft. Exactly. Maybe not even then. Like yeah. this is such a long process. It's and a I, slow I just, burn. I want people to get that through their heads. Yeah. And, I, and, and, and I think that that's okay. You want, if you're Arthur Smith, you want options. Yeah. If Marcus Mariota, I'm sorry, Marcus Mariota takes this job, Job, stranglehold style and runs with it he's 28 years old you have a good quarterback oh, your offense is fun and entertaining mm -hmm. which is what falcons fans like oh, entertaining yeah. and winning together right and don't Mar we all <laughs> yeah that's true uh, that's why we all go see top gun more than once um <laughs> nonetheless you look at that um and that's a good thing yeah. and if desmond ritter develops on a slower path or a quick one and he earns the job yeah. or steals it that's okay. not a, a bad thing either. Yeah. If you come out of this and you say, we don't have any, after 12 months or a couple of years, you say, we don't have any long-term solution, go back into the draft. Yep. You're not committed to anything long-term yep. because the investment is not great. So we're probably going to talk about quarterbacks again, okay. I would assume, on a future installment. And you can make sure it goes straight to your phone by subscribing Ooh. on iTunes, Look Spotify. Look at that transition. How about just the Falcons channel on YouTube? Have you seen what they're pumping out these days? Oh, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Uh, nonetheless, do all those types of things. Um, I think we're going to do like a mailbag podcast. I just Ooh. came up with that right now. So uh, we'll ask for questions on social media at that time, but get them Sweet. ready. Even if they're quarterbacks, that's fine. We like talking about them too. Even if you're wondering what Starbucks drink I'm drinking right now. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm reading it and there are so many instructions I can't <laughs> possibly. Something about light ice and 28 pumps of vanilla. 28 uh, seems excessive. Yeah, well, that's what I said when I ordered you one, one time. Uh, anyway, we got to get out of here. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. We're going to talk to you again real, real soon. I promise you. Go find a white sand beach. That's what Gosh. all the Falcons players are doing. Yeah. They're running and staying in shape on the, like on the white sand of beach. Course. And then they're laying on a chaise lounge right. under the sun. Do what you got to do. Yeah, um, we all need to do that from time to time because we got training camp coming up. Wait, it's pretty soon. So nonetheless, enjoy your time off. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll talk to you again real, real soon.